and get some audio from the hall and uh, resolve a couple lag issues. And we are ready to go in the quarterfinals here. Daniel has drawn a hand with Restring Guntus in it. We'll see if he keeps that hand. He will. Stefan will mulligan. Of course, the nightmare scenario of any player playing against a Restring Guntus deck is to draw what you interpret to be a really good hand of like five or six cards, all the same house, and then have your opponent. And then have the opponent play Restaurant Guntus, call that house, and prevent you from, uh, from playing any cards, ending the game on turn one. I've heard lore that this happened once at Gen Con. I believe it did. There was a restaurant gun to turn one victory. Um, I did not see it personally, but it is possible that that happened. I've heard that it happened, so. I did, yes. There was, I think, I think someone mulliganed in, or drew a hand of six Shadows cards to start. Their opponent played restaurant gun to called Shadows, and that was the end of the game. <laughs> I did, that did not happen in this tournament, as far as I'm aware, but that did happen once in another tournament. So, nonetheless, Daniel has not played Restaurant Guntus Turn 1. He's played what I believe is Long Fuse Binds. If I'm reading the art correctly, this deck is in a different language. So, I will attempt to decode by using art. And, uh, yeah, that was a pretty, it was a pretty brutal situation for what I heard. So, he's played two Logos cards. He's archived a card and pass turn. Archiving also helps protect yourself against Restring Guntus lockouts because it allows you to potentially have access to one card in Archive that you wouldn't have, but nonetheless, Restring Guntus lockouts are savage, are bad regardless. All right. So Stefan is playing Logos. He's played Phase Shift. He's Phase Shifted into a Screaming Cave. That will allow him to use Screaming Cave on his next turn and draw discards. And he's archiving phase shift from the archaeologist and playing mother. That's a very solid turn by by Stefan. He's doing a reasonable job of insulating himself against Guntus because right now with Scream with Screaming Cave Screaming Cave is 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 in this situation just an excellent insurance policy against restoring Guntus. Because if he were, if Daniel were to play Restaurant Guntus and call Logos, then Stefan could, even if he had a handful of Logos cards, just call Dis, use Streaming Cave, dump the hand, and get a new hand, which is an amazing counter to Guntus. If Daniel were to play Restring Guntus and call Dis, so he can't use Cave, then Stefan has creatures on board that can kill the Restring Guntus if it's not under Taunt or something. So Stefan has done a good job insulating himself against the Restring Guntus. How many creatures with cave? How many creatures in the deck um, that are... You're asking how many creatures in the in the deck that he have? Um, Emperor has... Shuler, Shaffles, Pit Lord. So I think only the three disc creatures. 
But it does have Pit Lord and Double Hysteria, so you can do all sorts of nonsense combos there. But I think only only three disc creatures with the cave. Um, meanwhile, uh, Daniel is um, playing Logos, I think. I think he's reaped. I apologize. I went away for a second there. I didn't see what happened. Oh, he's played Bouncing Death Quark. That's what this is right here on the board. He's played Bouncing Death Quark, and he's killing creatures, and he's now trying to figure out um, how that interaction works. But that's what he's in the middle of a Bouncing Death Quark sequence. I think he's he's still doing that. So he's killing uh, the Mechanic and Brain Eater, and I think he stopped the Death Quark effect now. Well, he better, because Stefan has no other creatures. He's playing Remote Access... To remote access the cave. Now, I don't... He just shuffled his Archivist into deck. You don't, you don't, lose, you don't lose your creature that's on the board. He scooped his creature off the board by accident. Because he, he has, apparently has not played with Screaming Cave very much. Right, so the remote access will stay out because it's in discard. Because it's still resolving. And he's going to get the rest of the, of the Screaming Cave effect. This is... A, the cards directly in front of him appear to be in his archive. So he's going to get a Screaming Cave trigger um, on a remote access turn. Which is kind of fun. Um, Stefan is cutting the deck. And Daniel's going to draw six new cards with his free Screaming Cave effect. Which is kind of funny, but awesome. So he's drawn into Gateway here. He did not... I, I don't know... I don't think he redrew Resting Guntus. Because he shuffled Resting Guntus back into the deck. So Gateway Restaurant Guntus is a particularly potent combo if you have some reasonable idea of what your opponent has at hand. Um, so he's called Dis, he's playing, uh, Stefan's playing a Lash, three fates just to kill that creature. And gain an Amber. Mind Barb, trying to hit one of the cards in Daniels. They're gonna they're gonna roll. He's got a, a relentless whispers. And now Daniel has to decide what to do. He's probably just going to call. Probably just going to call this. You could hear some audio in the hall. Like I said, they're running multiple different events at this particular tournament. He's chosen to discard Gateway, uh, play Tosin, and... I believe that's Eater of the Dead. Again, I'm going to look this up because... It's in a different language. Played Shadows and played an Urchin. Okay, so I was just pulling up Daniel's deck list off camera. And yes, that was in fact an Eater of the Dead that he's played on the side there. Meanwhile, Stefan's Cold Shadows played Urchin, Steeled one, played Relentless Whispers to deal two damage to Tosin, who's on the flank here. And Daniel has, sorry, Stefan has put himself in check at six. And now, um, so, uh, Wookie, this is not CTW. This is a, K he has caves in the deck, but it is not CTW. This deck is, 
I will post the deck in chat. This is the deck list for Stefan. Um, you can see it, it does have Cave in the deck, but it is not... Oh, I'm sorry. That's Daniel's deck. Sorry. Posting that in chat, and then... Hold on a minute. I will post... Emperor Tripmall Platts also in chat. So you can see um, the decks there. So those are the two decks. So Daniel has done a few things there in Shadows, put himself in check, but he did not stop Stefan from forging. So Stefan has forged the first key of the match here. And now Daniel is... Sorry. So Stefan is choosing what to do. I believe. It looks like Daniel's deciding what to do, although I'm not quite sure what happened because... Okay, nope. It is Stefan's turn. Stefan is playing. He has taken his archive and called Logos. All right. So he's called Logos, and he's thinking about his options here. So he's up a key. He would like to find some way to stop Daniel from forging if he can, but he may not be able to, and certainly not in in Logos. He's playing Twin Bolt to wipe the board, which is very good. He's played an Anomaly Exploiter off screen. You can see it in the hand in the hand thing there. He's played his Maverick Flaxia in Logos. God, I love that card. Um, Maverick Flaxia for two. He's phase shifted to play too much to protect to steal an additional two. So he now has put himself in check all off this Logos turn. This deck is pretty good. Um, it's fast. It does weird things. It has Maverick Flaxia. It has a cave for, for insurance. Um... Daniel does forge, though. Daniel, for you played too much to protect to take him to six, but he had no additional steal or capture. So Daniel for, excuse me. Daniel forged and um, is now on one key as well, and is looking through Stefan's discard to maybe try to determine what houses Stefan has in hand. I did not see if Daniel has Restoring Guntus in hand. Does he have the Guntus in hand? It would be at the far end, and I couldn't see. There is no Guntus in hand that I can see. He's got some he's got some shadow stuff with Magda. Um I'm sorry, logo stuff with Magda. I think no, Magda's in, he's got Magda and Shadows, he's got Bouncing Death Quark, and a couple other cards in Logos, and I think he had something interesting in in Dis there. We're getting a little lag on stream, but it'll come back in a second. So he's called uh, Shadows, played Maga just to take him off check, stolen two, and passed the turn back. So that's not a really great turn for Daniel, but it does take Stefan off check, and it looks like that was probably the only way he had of doing it. We saw Daniel has Ember Imp in hand now. Or, yeah, I think Ember Imp. And then a couple other cards. Poltergeisting Special Delivery to deal 3 damage to Magda. Okay. See if he can generate one more Amber here. So he's played Pit Lord. Alright, so does he have any way to get rid of Pit Lord. Hopefully. 
He's played Shaffles. You really like to see him. Schuler. Okay, so Stefan is shuffling deck. So he's played Pit Lord without any immediate removal, and he's activated Screaming Cave at the end of turn. Now, this is a very interesting play, a potentially risky play for Stefan, because if Stefan, um, if, if Daniel is able to remove some of the other creatures on board, we're able to remove Shaffles and remove Schuler, um, Stefan... Stefan does have the ability to activate Cave if he doesn't draw any discards, but it's still pretty bad. Okay. All right. So, um, apologies for the silence for a second there. Yeah, he does have double hysteria. You're right. He has cards he can um, get into to play uh, to play Pit Lord. Uh, Wookie, were you saying he has double hysteria in hand, or were you saying he just has double hysteria? Period. Because he does have double hysteria in the deck. Okay. So Daniel has played Restring Guntus. Daniel was not aware of the Restring Guntus of the Dis Pit Lord Restring Guntus Errata. So Daniel is frustrated that he did not ask in advance about the Restring Guntus um, Errata or clarification. So here's here's the issue. Um, I'm going to mute this for a second because I this is kind of a convoluted explanation. So Restoring Guntus is a card that says choose a house. As long as Restoring Guntus is in play, your opponent can't choose that house. And Pit Lord is a card that says as long as Pit Lord is in play, you have to choose this. So there was a very brief period of time in the early in the early formation of this game where if this happened, right, if you... Um, if you had Pit Lord in play and your opponent played Restoring Guntus and called Dis, it was a functional lockout because you could not call Dis, but you had to call Dis, and so you basically just lost. You lost the game immediately. They have eroded that to say that, or issued a rules clarification, it's not really an errata, that says that cannot, cannot effects take precedence over must effects. So in this situation, after playing Restoring Guntus and calling Dis, Daniel did not ask the judge in advance, he was he was uh, unpleasantly surprised by the judge who told him correctly that because he's called this, that uh, the cannot effect takes precedent over the must effect. So in this case, he's not allowed to call this, and he must call one of the other two houses that he has. So logos or shadows. And you saw Daniel's reaction when he was told the ruling. He did not realize that, and he's very upset. Now, if for some reason, Stefan does not kill Restoring Guntus here, um, Daniel does have, um, does have Death Bouncing Death Quark in hand, so he can now, um, he can now use it. Uh, and answer your question, Wookie, uh, Stefan could not call Dis in that situation, so at least that was the use of Restoring Guntus. He could call Logos or Shadows, but he is in the process of, uh, he's in the process of calling Logos. Ah, and now Stefan has had his... Stefan has now had his chance to make a mistake and forget the rules. Um, yes, that's correct. Well, he can call his other houses. Here's the problem. There's a, there's a, there's an Ember Imp in play. Okay. So. Th 
So Daniel is now pointing out that Stefan has played Library Access and played Flay Shift. Those are two cards. Stefan has a problem. Stefan is trying to solve this problem of playing one too many cards. So he drew Quixo off of the second card draw. So he should not have been able to play Quixo. He drew another he drew another card off Quixo. So he's the judge is telling him that Quixo was an in the, is an illegal play. And now Daniel is trying to remember if that's the sequence he remembers. The Stefan has an answer here, and that is simply to fight Flaxia into, into Imp. The judge is asking Daniel if he's satisfied that the card that he drew right here in front of him... Yeah, this is board board state warnings. So fortunately, very fortunately, this happened in the finals of the uh, Archon event, of the sealed event, excuse me, in Atlanta. I was there, I was casting it live. And an opponent forgot, was in the middle of an LA turn, forgot about Ember Imp. But Stefan has the chance to solve the problem that that person did not. I believe that was Bobby Sunshine in Atlanta. Did not have the ability to fix the mistake because he did not... He uh, he did not have a Logos creature on board at the time, so but Stefan does. He has Maverick Flaxia, so Maverick Flaxia to the rescue, killing the Emberimp, and resuming resuming the sequence. If Stefan did not have Maverick Flaxia on board right there, there's a very real chance this game would be not necessarily over, but it would be it would be very bad. It would be a very bad situation for Stefan. So he's he's able to remedy the problem, roll back the situation, fix the board state. He probably got a warning off that, but he does he is able to continue the LA sequence if he has more cards in hand from Logos. Woo! Okay, that was a close one for Stefan. Um, that was almost a dramatic turn. Uh, okay, I guess he has no other cards to play, so that's fine. He does kill the Restoring Guntus. Most importantly. He kills the Restoring Guntus. Daniel, I do not believe, has any easy ways to recur the Restoring Guntus. He does not have an Arise in his deck. He does not have an... He obviously, he does not playing um, uh, Untamed, so he doesn't have a Seed or anything like that. So he has no obvious ways to, to recur the Restoring Guntus. He's played two creatures. He's bouncing, bouncing Death Quark to weigh two creatures. And now we're back to the situation where he has to call, where Stefan has to call Dis. He's left the Pit Lord alive. He's required to play Dis, which would be pretty bad for him, except that one, he has some cards in hand, and two, he has Screaming Cave on board. So he probably wants to reap here. I think he has three Fates in hand. Yeah, three three Fates is fine. Now again, he has Screaming Cave, so he's not going to be locked out of his own deck, even if he's forced to call Dis and Donuts that doesn't have a removal. So he uses Poltergeist to get an Amber. Um, he is a three fates to kill Pit Lord to put himself in check for the final key.
Okay, um, so he is, uh, Daniel has called Shadows, has done the things he could do, the only things he could do, play Magda to try to, uh, to, to steal one, played Urchin to steal two. The judge is coming over and telling them that they're, they're, he's giving both of them a one-point warning, which is functionally a slap on the wrist, but it is a warning in the system for the board state problems earlier. Um, but those have all been fixed. We're all fine. He's bait and switch for one, so I believe he's up to four there. Playing routine job to steal another one. Does he have TMTP in hand there? No, he's another routine job. Yeah, I just play the other routine job, steal the other two, right? Yeah. Interesting. So he... He chose, for some reason, not to use the second routine job, chain himself... I, I don't know what the reason was for that play. I mean, it's probably nerves. Playing at it, playing at the feature table on day two of a major event is a lot of stress. Um, having having played on stream before at a vault, I can testify it is a lot of stress. So, um, you know, we'll cut him a break there. But I think that was probably a mistake to not play the second routine job. There's no real reason you're holding it. So uh, Daniel has used Nexus to use the lash, and so. He has used Hysteria to pop um, back to the hand. And he's playing Mind Barb to try to maybe get rid of Magda. Or maybe it doesn't matter here. He's got eight cards. Okay. So he's discarded, I think that was a true Buru at random with a Mind Barb. And he is a check at 9. So if Daniel does not have a way to take him off check at 9, he does though. He has too much to protect to steal 3. And then he's going to play Magda, replay Magda to take back 2 more, I would assume. Play, replay Nexus, Magda to take 2. And then play Nexus, and he doesn't have any other creatures, so pass turn. So now he's in check at 7. Um, 8, excuse me. Daniel is in check at 8. So this is, a, this is a somewhat interesting match here. Although, he is going to answer back with another too much to protect. <laughs> we are having protecting issues on this table. There's some issues with protection. Uh, um... Stealing one more uh, with Urchin, playing a Dodger, playing Dodger. And he's in check at eight, which is going to allow Daniel to use his Nexus to reap and use the Lash again um, from Stefan if he has no other answers in hand. I... Oh, he's playing the second routine job. Finally, finally he plays the second routine job. Although I guess he was, you know, to be fair to Stefan, I asked the question earlier why he didn't play the second routine job. He might have been playing around too much to protect. And if that's what he was doing, then um, then he was doing a great job because apparently he had a spider sense that I didn't and that Daniel had too much to protect in hand. So he was playing around that card. So he, he did a good job there and he's already seen the too much to protect. Now Daniel is left with probably no options on the table other than to try to uh, try to go into an L.A. sequence and uh, find some things here. So he's played Archivist, played Dimension Door to draw a card. I think that's Fogify. I don't know. I don't recognize the art immediately. I think that's Vexil and Analyst to draw a card, to play Anomaly Exploiter to draw a card. Pay one to draw a card. That's it. Stefan. Stefan has won. Stefan has won the game. And Daniel put up a very good fight there. 
Uh, but Stefan has won the game. I do not know what he was looking for. I think he might have just been playing it out. Um, does he have... I don't know if he has that. Hold on. He does not. Daniel is understandably upset about the sequence of events before. But I, I don't know what he was what he was digging for there. There's nothing in Logos that he has that I can see that would allow him to um, that would allow him to to take him off check. I, I just don't I don't understand. So Daniel's having a conversation with the judge about the whole sequence, the the LA turn where he had played one too many cards. Um, he might also he well, I, I think listen, I think he's just playing it out. I, I don't I certainly don't fault him for that. He might Daniel might also be upset about um, about the Pit Lord uh, restoring Guntus ruling that he did not. I don't believe he sought clarification before he made the play. So that's a lesson to all the players out there. Make sure you seek clarification from a judge if you're not sure what playing a card is going to do to the board state. you got to find that out. It's on you to find that out in advance, to know it in advance. You can't play it and then hope you've done something good later. 